bound. Love is pain, and pain is love. The universe is a cruel, uncaring void. The key to being happy isn't to search for meaning; it's to just keep yourself busy with unimportant nonsense, and eventually, you'll be dead. Existence is a prison, a dark sort of game, or a fabricated simulation designed by some extraterrestrial entity out there in the supposed deep black void. All right, uh, God, God, is it? It's time for some answers. Who are we? Here's the bad news. Your video game characters. You were designed by computer geeks and cubicles to run around and be controlled by other computer geeks in their bedrooms. We knew that, Birkenstocks. Yeah. Explain to us the meaning of life. Okay. Those computer geeks who control you. Thing is, they're part of a video game too. You see, the planet Earth is my most immersive, detailed video game yet, and I play it 24 hours a day. It's great. You can get out of your car, have a family. I even put in a complete and wholly consistent fossil record for the nerds. So, the Simpsons game, your game, is really nothing but a mini game inside my Earth game. If you think about it. So, not only are we not real, we're characters inside a mini game inside another game. And the people playing us right now are the characters inside the big game that you're playing. Well, you're not inside just any game. The planet Earth got a score of 96 on Meta Metacritic. <gasps> God, there is one thing. Do you ever wonder if you're a character in a video game? <laughs> that's, that's just dumb. I mean, stop being dumb. It's very likely you know many people who subscribe to this philosophical perspective of life. The nihilists tend to have self-absorbed, destructive impulses and complexes, usually causing a destruction of themselves, those around them, or society as a whole in the long term, directly or indirectly. With nihilism, you will find an atheistic or secular worldview based on the materialism of Kant and Darwin, the skepticism of Hegel and Schopenheimer, and the cold vein of Machiavelli. Interestingly, and beneath our noses, this dark cloud known as nihilism is covertly rising back to the surface of society and has been systematically injected into the populace via mass network and social media, especially the music industry, news broadcasting, and Hollywood. A nihilistic culture has now presented itself as the norm today. So normal, in fact, average people fail to even notice it. Consciences have been seared beyond repair. Endless fear porn and trauma has leveled the public to a lukewarm numbness. Moral values have been bent into an L-shape, crooked and passive-aggressive, vengeful and suppressing emotional rage. Mixed with drug potions and flesh addictions, popular culture within society has rendered the masses tacit, yet corrupt. Confused and insecure, yet all at the same time valiant and cavalier double-minded and double-binded. Nihilism, the new unknown. For us to understand nihilism, we must first recognize that its origin is found in existentialism. A materialist's angst and obsession with the meaning of a life that apparently has no author. Then, and possibly most importantly, we must refer to the social movement that breeds nihilism, and that is postmodernism. In short, postmodernism is a reactionary movement to modernism, which is based in Western traditions and most notably a Judeo-Christian worldview. Postmodernism was formed as a socio-cultural movement during the Enlightenment era, when men like uh, Francis Bacon, Newton, and Descartes 
began to question the stiff and binary truths of the modern era and wanted to engage with science, the esoteric, and nature instead of the creator God and its moral absolutism. Similar to the Reformation's reaction to crooked Catholicism of the monarchy, the Enlightenment era wanted to change the Western traditions of truth. This resulted in postmodernism, a spunky literary movement, an anti art wave in broad terms, but at its crux, the postmodernist aims to not only redefine culture and tradition, but remove the entire concept of absolute truth, form, standards, and natural order altogether. By focusing on logic, reason, and the individual, postmodernist thinkers took the works of Bacon, Descartes, Newton to an all new realm and configuration. Namely, figures like Immanuel Kant, to Martin Heidegger, and Foucault, and of course, the infamous deconstructionist Derrida. Now, these individuals ushered in what we know now today as the postmodern worldview, an anti-truth, anti-distinction, and individualism, and anti-God philosophy that stands as the foundation of most neoliberalism in academia throughout the earth. Here we find the concept of logic, reason, and truth completely disregarded as viable goals for humanity. Michael Foucault himself states his quote, Reason is the ultimate language of madness. Instead, the focus becomes arbitrary feelings, emotion and subjectivity over objectivity and absolutes, community and collectivism over individualistic nation states. Our modern day identity politics culture is a perfect example of this, since it is in fact a postmodern movement. Here you will find pro-socialism and communism, equality of outcome proponents, egalitarianism, diversity, inclusion, representation, and plenty more new speak terms to fill your goblet. Overall, within postmodernism, there is a consensus on secular humanism as a belief system, atheism and agnosticism as well. To put it simple, Postmodernism is an intellectual reinterpretation of reality and epistemology. Truth is a myth, and reason is just a white male construct. Fascinating. What does this have to do with nihilism? Well, nihilism is a byproduct of the postmodernist worldview. Once you remove reason, meaning, and truth, morality, and especially God, what else is there to believe in? Nothingness. Nihilism can be generally described in three specific forms, moral, spiritual, and intellectual nihilism. No absolute morality, no absolute God, no absolute truth. In other words, anything is up for debate. Your truth is your truth, and my truth is my truth. No one is right, no one is wrong. Since there's no intrinsic point to anything, do what you want, how you want, or simply do nothing at all. Fans gonna be like, damn, bro, I wake up at like two. I smoke, I eat, I get on my phone for like three hours, watch TV, Amazon Prime. My nigga, I'm set right now, so I don't really do shit. You feel me? I just be chilling. That's the beauty of this shit. A life of loose pleasure-seeking and risk-taking adventure can result from this nihilistic perspective, but also a life of escapism, isolation, depression, and anguish is another result that far too often occurs, especially in our modern youth culture. What seems to coincide with this perspective of nihilism is a required presence of narcissism and self-absorption. And as we can see, our popular culture today has no shortage of malignant narcissism within all of its messages and imagery. This movement of generalized narcissism is very present in pretty much 
everything we are given. In fact, narcissism has arguably become a shared cultural value. They sell us this false sense of royalty and social dominion, as if we all are to aspire to be kings and queens, yet they never mention the majority inherently will be peasants. I mean, nothing matters anyway, right? Might as well love death and destruction. What's the point in changing? How about this for double-minded? A postmodern neoliberal culture that promotes reckless capitalism, an obsession with cash and personal wealth, yet feeds off a socialist government program system and sets unrealistic standards for millions of eager fans and followers via social media. Look at me, look at us, we made it. The majority of you won't, but keep watching. <laughs> it must take a massive lack of empathy to arrogantly wave fresh cut steaks in front of chained rabid dogs. Indeed, there is no shortage of narcissism and nihilism within our pop culture and mass society today. But before we present how nihilism has been ingrained into our culture, it is important to detail two specific levels of nihilism. This is the concept of normative nihilism and deep nihilism. Normative nihilism can be considered as a macro sense of nihilistic tendencies. The generalized behaviors that come with the lack of care, empathy, and concern for oneself, others, and their society as a whole. We see normative nihilism everywhere. You hear about it everywhere. Yet most people have no idea these tendencies and behaviors are forms of nihilism. Basically, today it is pretty normal to not care about your society, your community, and even yourself, or only caring about yourself and no one else. This is not only rooted in generalized narcissism, but it is accompanied by nihilistic perspectives. And the hypothesis here is that these concepts are being indoctrinated into our society and mainly our youth via mainstream media, social media, and mass entertainment.